John's Gospel, chapter 12. John's Gospel, chapter 12. Begin with me there at verse 1. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Then he said, Not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what it was put in it. But Jesus said, Let her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you will have with you always, but me you do not always. I want to do this, just close your eyes for a moment. Father, the person in this place, or the one who will hear this message, needs a word from you. Hide us behind the revelation of your cross. Speak to us as only you can, and grant that we will hear you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now do me a favor, be very nice to the person next to you and just touch them gently and just say, neighbor, your opinion doesn't count in this matter. (laughs) I'm sure you've had the occasion in your own life where someone has uh, talked you out of something you knew you were supposed to do. They didn't want you to do it, but you knew you were supposed to do it. On the inside, you had a feeling. You knew intuitively that it was God speaking to you, but they couldn't see it, so they kept talking to you long enough till they kept you from doing that which you were intended to do. In some cases, you live with the regret of not moving forward on what you knew God was putting in your heart. Sometimes we need to learn that God speaks to us individually and not necessarily collectively. I wish everybody could hear the still small voice that you hear, but everybody can't hear what God is saying to you. It doesn't mean that the scripture is not correct. There are times in your life when you need to be guided by the inner voice of God to the exclusion of the outer voice of others. And and this may appear to fly in the face of sacred Proverbs. It may appear not to go along with Holy Scripture, but whatever I am faced with going it alone, I am forced then to reflect even more deeply upon the Scriptures and more deeply upon the decision because I have to double check Because if I'm not accepting the counsel that I'm receiving, I need to be reassured that it's God. That's where Gideon gets his fleece from. If everybody else is running and you want me to run forward and everybody's going backwards, then I need you to show me that this is really from you. You see, what I've come to understand is that the Bible is right. That that Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15 in the old King James Version says, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto wise wise counsel. Counsel is wise. Or, Or Proverbs 15 and 22, Without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors there, they are established. I don't, those are real good, and, and, and I accept them. I believe them. I hold dear to them. You know, Proverbs 19 and 20 does it this way. Hear counsel and receive instructions that thou mayest be wise in the latter end. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. I am sure 
that those are right. I am positive the Bible is right. When I grew up, they used to sing a song, said the Bible is right, and the refrain came back. That means somebody's wrong. <laughs> I'm positive about it. You, you know, you know it, it gets even better. Uh, Proverbs 24, verse 6, does this way. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Good word. I can stand on it. I can depend on it. But something happens only on occasion where God steps in and something God wants to get done requires you to go it alone. Now that's a scary thought. It doesn't make you feel all rosy and good, but there's something that God wants to get done that, that others may not understand. Others may not embrace at the time. Others may not get it. And so you've got to be able to understand that there are times when God wants to do something through you and for you and maybe even for others. What I need to recognize is God moves in mysterious ways, and so I gotta be careful not to listen to all of the chatter. Nowadays, you got a lot of chatter. Twitter noise and, and, and YouTube noise and video noise and Instagram noise. There's a lot of noise out there and people are always chattering and just because someone is an influencer in society doesn't mean that they're influencing right. Just because someone uses a product in society and it works for them doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. You could drink the slimming juice every day, all day long, and still wake up with the same skirt on and the same pants size and the same shirt. Just because it worked for them doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. And in truth, you don't quite know how it worked for them. They might have drank the juice after they went to surgery. So they just didn't tell you the whole story. Listen, you've got to realize that sometimes you've got to be an independent thinker. Come here for just a moment. Let's look at this text because what I believe in the text is going to bless your bones. Stay with me one moment. Here it is, a woman of God. Mary has in her something to do. And I believe, number one, God gives her an extraordinary assignment. An extraordinary assignment. What, what do you mean, Reverend? Well, the Bible says that Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house filled with the fragrance of the oil. Listen, let me work on this extraordinary assignment because see, what, what one has to recognize is in that culture that, that because they walked around with sandals on all day long and because most of the places they went, they walked to. You, you have very little few times where you see Jesus taking any kind of mass transportation or any transportation at all. We got him on a boat going across the water, going over to the other side. You got him riding next Sunday on a donkey, but you don't have him getting a whole lot of rides. He's walking and, and, and I don't know I don't think Stacy Adams was making shoes back then. There, 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 there wasn't no good shoes. Kohan hadn't started putting the Nike insole inside the shoe yet. What you had was a leather sole shoe. And the custom was that when someone came into your house, you would give them some water so they could wash their feet. And if you were wealthier, you would have your servant wash their feet for them. And if you were really humble, you'd probably do it yourself. Yeah, yeah they, they, they washed their feet and they give them a towel to dry their feet and undoubtedly I'm sure when he walked in the house of Mary and Martha I'm sure they had water there but there were a lot of people there as well so someone had to keep dumping water and getting water because you can't be taking off dirt from Bethany and Nazareth and everywhere else in the same water so somebody was dumping water getting water and maybe they didn't get Jesus quite like Mary thought he should have been taking care 
care of. I know his feet were washed, but just not the way she thought it ought to be done. I know you just did it ordinary. You just put some water, slap a little dab on top, little dab on the bottom, say a little dab will do you. But it won't do for me because I've been listening to what's been going on and I've come to my own conclusion about who he is. And because I've reached my own conclusion, I've decided that there's more to Jesus than a miracle worker. And I realize there's more to Jesus than somebody walking around with disciples for three years. There's something going on. If Jesus has the power to raise up my brother from the dead, then this Jesus deserves a little more than a quick slap of water on the top and a little dab on the bottom because he just raised my brother from the dead and he's sitting at the same table next to Jesus and a few days ago he was just inside of his grave but when Jesus showed up at the tomb even though he was late he was on time because he called my brother from the dead by his name and my brother came hopping out in his grave clothes this ain't no regular man you can't do no regular hand wash for him you can't just to give a little dab and say it'll do he deserves a little more because when he's done something extraordinary you ought to do something extraordinary in exchange when you've been blessed in an extraordinary way, you ought to have an extravagant praise. There ought to be something different about your hallelujah. Ought to be something different about your thank you, Jesus. Ought to be something different about your walk. Extraordinary gifts deserve extraordinary praise. And she said, then nobody, I ain't consulting with you. I ain't consulting with you. I, I know my sister's over there, but I ain't talking to my sister because this is my praise. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Can't nobody thank God for you like you need to thank him for yourself. When God has blessed you, you ought to say thank you. Here she is. Now, now understand this. You can't find a woman in the scripture that's not talked about negatively if she touches a man that's not her husband. But she goes up to him, busts open the bottle of oil. Now the scripture says she broke the neck of the bottle, which means there's no going back. Look at somebody right now. Stay with me. Tell him, I'm all in. Oh. Do, do me a favor, just tell somebody, whatever it takes, I'm all in. I feel a preach on me today. She breaks it and she pours it. And the moment she starts pouring, as the oil is coming down, she then takes her hair whew, and begins, I ain't got no towel. My hair. And begins to use her hair as a towel to massage and wash his feet. Look at, look at somebody say, neighbor, neighbor. sometimes sometime. you, you got to get personal with your praise. <laughs> you can't be sadiddy now. Okay. 
you look at there are times when you can't be sedity, you can't be sophisticated, you 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 can't try to act like you educated. There are some times when you just got to get down with the get down. See, I, I've seen doctors and PhDs and MDs and, and, and lawyers and sheriffs and police shouting. And you wonder why? Because what they just went through, they realized if it had not been for the Lord. See, praise is not a poor people's campaign. Praise is a blessed people's campaign. Because when you've been blessed, when you've been blessed, you ought to know how to praise him. Hey. Okay, y'all, y'all, I'm going to help you right here. When she broke the oil, she poured it out. The fragrance filled the house. I need y'all to help me right here. Which means that even folk that weren't ready to praise got caught in the wind of the praise coming. Look at somebody say, neighbor, don't get too close to me. There's a praise on the inside. I'm getting ready to fill this house with my oil. Ah! Uh, she, she got the. The whole house sent it up. I don't know about you, but, but, but every now and then, I just got to turn it out. I don't shout every Sunday, but I've had God do some things for me that made me have to give him a praise. So, some of y'all remember Mother Hazel Daly? Mother Daly went home to be with the Lord. But years ago, I was in here teaching Bible study on a Wednesday night, and all of a sudden, Mother Daly come walking in the door, and she is still in her hospital clothes. And she, she started she start dancing by the time she gets out. And of course, I'm concerned. I stop. I run back there. Mama, you all right? She said, I'm on my way home, son. But I told the Lord if he let me get out of this place, and if they were having church, I was going to go by and at least say thank you. Somebody in here, you forgot to say thank you. The first lesson you ought to learn when you've been blessed is to say thank you. But, 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 y'all, 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 you said that. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help. This is good right here. She puts the oil on him. Because she has an extraordinary assignment. Now, I haven't got to the assignment issue yet. But because before we could understand the assignment, somebody takes exception with an attitude. Oh, Judas jumps up. Ain't this something? That, that oil is a whole year worth of wages. Ain't, ain't this something? We could have we taken care of the poor. Ain't this something? You out of order now. <laughs> out of order? Wrong. I need to preach this to you. Because, see, 
everybody will not understand your worship. Everybody won't understand your praise. Everybody won't understand your hallelujah or your thank you, Jesus. See, some of you, 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 your co-workers see you pray over your food and they already started eating. They just look at you like you're strange. They, they don't understand that you realize that you wouldn't have food to eat. Teeth to chew it with. Whether it's from the dental work or just from your taking care of the dental work. You wouldn't have teeth to chew it with. You wouldn't have an appetite to desire it. Or a stomach to hold it. Or a body to keep it. Or a life needing energy to go and be sustained by it. If it had not been for the one who woke you up this morning and started you on your way and gave you life, health, and strength. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? I gotta hurry, I gotta hurry. Here, here it is. He takes exception. He says, we could have took care of the poor. And uh, the commentator gives us some information that is important because they kind of give a side footnote. The footnote says, he didn't say that because he cared about the poor. He said that because he was a thief. More money, more money, more money for him. I'm blessed somebody right here. You, you be careful of who you take counsel from. Because they could say the right thing with the wrong motive. Because what's motivating a person is as important as what's coming out of their mouth. He's got a motivation. Watch this. I'm, I'm about to preach for somebody right now. Look, so I said, neighbor, neighbor, watch for hidden agendas. <laughs> well, Lord, have mercy. Some folk don't realize it. You, you've been set up a long time ago by folk who talked in your ear, who had ulterior motives and hidden agendas. But what you've got to understand is this. When she went to give her gift to Jesus, she knew everybody that was around the table. And she knew what attitude they'd have. She knew they weren't going to care for her. But that did not stop her from her assignment. Okay. There are two stories about Mary. One about Mary and one is called an unnamed woman. Two stories. And of course, when you're doing all history, stories get conflated. So I don't know whether this Mary here is the same as the anonymous woman who is in the other text. Or if there are two different instances that happen to separate times. Watch where I'm going. But I can tell you this much. In the other story, when the woman comes to bring her, her, her gift and she washes his feet with her tears, they begin to talk about her personally because she was acting like that and then they talked about Jesus and his gift of propheticness because they say he should know that she ain't nobody and the last kind of person you want to lay hands on you and if you were any good you wouldn't have nothing to do with her let me preach a little while you need to realize this. I don't care what people think about you. If God has given you an assignment, prepare your heart for the backlash 
Be ready for somebody to talk about you. Be ready for someone to say it doesn't take all that. Be ready for somebody to criticize what God's doing in you. But you go on and handle your business. Because if God wants to use you, let him use you. Okay. I, I got to go to my seat. Uh, I've got an extraordinary assignment. I've got a person with an exception attitude. He takes exception to her doing what she does. But I got an expressed assurance. I'm going to stop with this one. I'm, I got to go to my, my seat. I got to stop. Because when Jesus looks, of course, being who he is, you would think that the argument raised by Judas would get Jesus' attention and would make Jesus say, oh, you're right. You know, I'm so sorry. We could have done better. We shouldn't have given this, we shouldn't have done this extravagant thing. But Jesus doesn't do that. You, you, you could have said he, he might have used uh, my former administrative assistant's favorite words, my bad. <laughs> and said, I, I, I missed it on that one. I, I should have did better. You, you, you would have thought he had said, you know, you're so right. That need there was greater than this need here. Jesus does not demean the poor. He does not stop with believing in benevolence. But Jesus says that this woman did not act independently. This woman was on assignment. I'm going somewhere, watch this. Jesus says, okay, I know you, we got the poor problem, that's real. But what she did here today is going to be a memorial going forward that is going to be remembered. And in 2019, they'll still be talking about her praise. In 2019, they'll still be mentioning how great her sacrifice was and how extraordinary she was for standing out against a crowd of men busting up into the worship dinner table and blessing Jesus. They're going to be talking about her. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. JC? Every now and then I shorthand my conversation with him. Depends on how much trouble I'm in. I know I call him wonderful counselor, prince of peace, mighty God, majestic father. I adore him, worship him, Adonai. I, 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 go, I go in when I have time. If I ain't got time, I, gee! I don't even try to pronounce it all. I get real familiar because I know he hears my voice. I'm going to my seat. Watch this. I'm going to my seat. I'm going to my seat. I promise you. This is it. He, he, he looks at them and says, if you pay attention, now this is my version. Excuse this bit of isogetical truth. All of y'all been walking with me for three years. All of you have heard every sermon I preached. Every one of you have heard me keep talking about the fact that I would die and I'll raise up again. Every one of you have seen me do miracles. You just saw me raise Lazarus from the dead and he's right here eating with us. But not one of you thought that you would take time out and anoint me as a king or anoint me as a priest. But this woman here, she's gone beyond anointing me as a king or a priest. She's anointed me for my burial. Her assignment was to get me ready 
for my burial because you won't have time when I'm dead. What she's done is commendable because she has prepared me for the future. I got to die, but if I die, I will come again. Look over there. Somebody say, neighbor. I got to do my job. I don't know where I fit in, but I know there's a job with my name on it. And I'm going to praise him that I do my part. I got to serve him. I got to serve him until I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I would serve him till I die. Yeah! That's what you call express assurance. Look at somebody say, neighbor. Jesus will show you that he's with you. Now give God a praise up in this place.